So, over lockdown, the girlfriend, Mary, uh, got crazy into building these owls, which are really fantastic. But, um, well, it's her birthday coming up soon, and I've decided I'm going to make her a steampunk workstation so that this clutter of tools and bits and pieces can all be nicely piled into uh, a, a station she can actually work at. But um, yeah, so here you go. Here, look how cool these are. You know, they're, they're, they're really amazing. So yeah, we've got, she's got the jars, you know, as you would with all of the sculpting tools, stamps, there's the these rubbing powders. There's these little extruder pieces. So what I want to do is create a workstation that has a steampunk theme. These have a very much a steampunk uh, sort of feel to them. And it should be fun and, uh, you know, usable by any crafter uh, with, a, with a pile of tools. Uh, I should probably be quite envious that I don't have one myself for my own workstation over, over here. <laughs> so, yeah, there we go. Let's, uh, let's hope I can get this done. I'm having to kick her out of the studio at the moment so that I can, uh, can, I, I can do this. So, anyway, let's do this. <laughs> Okay, so here is the plan, uh, if you can see it. Maybe I'll put it up on the screen in the editing. So I've just got back from the local DIY store. They've done all of the cutting of the boards. There's a whole bunch of storage I want to put into this, as well as a place to work. So the overall area that I have to work in is this which just about matches the area that Mary works on back there. So that should be a comfortable area for her to work in. I suppose you guys don't know, but Mary has quite the passion for storage boxes, all sorts of containers. So I definitely want to give this a real emphasis on little nooks and crannies and drawers and storage points. That's the plan here. I plan to have a raised shelf at the back here. And then rising up behind that, a whole load of various sizes of tubes uh, which can stand tools upright in. That's the plan that just sort of sits back here. And then I plan to have fixed to the front of their uh, steampunk-esque decor, like gauges and pipes, you know, that as if they're feeding one another. Then you know those little, um, you get like stacks with loads of little drawers in. I hope to get one of those, chop it up a bit so that I can place some of the drawers underneath this shelf so she'll have a bunch of set of drawers there. And at the end here, I plan to have a sort of compartment section into which she can stack the ceramic tiles that she works on or, you know, put a piece in there just to keep it protected or something like that. So this area will stay largely clear. I'm going to either make this have a faux sort of leather finish, maybe with a sort of a copper edging, you know, like a metal edging with rivets and stuff. Um, but on there, what I also want, I've got my Lazy Susan and a piece that will be like, I'm gonna make this look like a riveted copper plate. And that will then sit here and she will have her rotating working area and then this whole thing you might notice that there is another board that matches this one so there will be then a, a raised piece and then in here I want to fit a load of uh, those uh, uh, store little little utility drawers that you can get in those sets 
So it's going to be a crazy amount of little compartments to store little things in. I might, this is going to be depending time, I haven't got that long, I might fit LEDs in some form or fashion. Okay, that's it. Okay, I'm going to start trying to put some more bits to this and see where I'm going. I think she's got are these stamps. I think I might need to make one of these much shallower but definitely raise it up behind uh, behind the shelf so that these effectively are like that. In fact that might be the one to do it with. And the other thing is is a lot of these are obviously plastic bottles uh, which are going to need sanding and as you saw with the explosion of talcum powder there uh, they're going to need uh, cleaning out as well. These tops by the way off these uh, well uh, gravy granules I think these will make some great little little copper trays and you know just for holding little bits that you're using right then there and then. Okay <laughs> it's it's a it's a crazy one this one is really is I hope it looks good in the end. I, I'm pretty happy. I'm sure it will. I think. I hope she likes it. I'm sure she will. Okay, so this is very roughly mocked up now. All these are still loose. They haven't been uh, placed yet. So the, the, these little sort of trays, my thinking is, is that something like that, they'll go underneath there. So you've got the area you'll be able to pull these out. No, that's, that's actually a point. She wouldn't be able to pull those out. I wonder if I could hinge these at the top. Hinge that up, and then you can access the various pegs. The other thing I've got to watch as well is this rotation. Obviously, that dimension gets wider as this rotates. So I think that's going to have to come down onto the front edge there so that there is enough so I've not got this dead centre on here yet obviously but so that there is enough rotation I mean these have room to go back probably that could be an ideal spot then to place a LED light as well right things to consider okay as I as I plan this out Okay, there we go. All of the uh, organizer parts are in. They're all glued, they're all nice and solid. And uh, I'm still having thoughts about the, the gaps that will be here. But I've, got, but I've got some ideas there. I think it could be an ideal opportunity to have the little pipes and whatever coming up that's gonna make it look like it's some kind of factory of some description. I hate to see steampunk where it's just got cogs stuck to stuff for no real reason. I like the cogs to have, at least look like they're performing some kind of a function. Um, so I've fitted um, a piece of wood at the back here, just a, a three quarter inch piece of pine that uh, will I can attach hinges to or whatever for the shelf so that this can lift up like that.
So on the end panel here, what I really want to do is I've got this kind of rotating little bit of storage made up from some jars. So I just need to get this bolt through the side panel and then that needs to go into this box that I've made from EVA and it's that that the jars are going to attach to. Um, so I had to put a hole through there and then I needed a central piece as well. I just glued that in there so that the bolt had something on the inside to pass through, uh, which was fine. I would have probably made that box out of MDF again if I was going to do it again. The, the, the EVA was just not quite sturdy enough. But I could glue the jars to that pretty easily. And then just out of my bits box, I found this little bit that I could uh, fit in there as a turning handle. That was easy enough to just cut out the EVA, glue it in there. It was brilliant. It worked really well. Okay, so <laughs> Mary's actually upstairs at the moment. So I've got to keep this one a little bit on the QT. But I've just done a quick dry run of putting everything together in the way I think this is going to work out and I've got to say I'm super pleased with it but here we go so we've got a stacking area we've got a shelf there'll be a backer board on this as well got all of the tool holders at the back here and they're all glued in this is a shelf which will hinge up now I did want to put something on the side of here but I don't think I'm going to be able to because of the way that's going to hinge up so we've got these storage containers here we've got the turntable that's going to work here this is not fixed yet so it's out of position to where it should be and then this will be fixed down of course but for right now we take that off uh, then we've got a whole load of these storage drawers she is fascinated obsessed with storage containers so hence that we've got some tube holders here for, I guess, you know, longer things, brushes or whatever, and it's going to be, and I have some end caps on there which are made to look like gauges. And if you can see here, these these are sort of insets, you know, that you can see into the drawers. I'm going to be putting detail work into here, here, and then make this look like there's lots of sort of pipes and bits going to whatever these gauges are reading. <laughs> so. It's a, it's a crazy project and I'm really running short on time now, so I am going to crack on. So it struck me whilst I've been plotting away here that I want this, this top board, I'm going to intended to glue it to the tops of these tray sets and I bet any money this plastic will be really difficult to glue but I can't rely on that for strength alone so what I've actually done is I've gone just been over to the uh, the DIY shop over the road and I've just had another couple of pieces of 6mm MDF cut so I'm going to get you to come in so as you can see more closely what it is I'm doing. And what I'm going to do is I've had these extra pieces of MDF cut. So I can place those in there. And then I've had a long one cut as well. So this will fit in the gap there, giving me extra surface area here and here and here and here and here but as I was just explaining this what I can actually do remember this top is on there but what I can actually do is screw through here just a straight up screw through there through there and I can do that all the way around this piece which is MDF will be glued and tacked to both the base piece and the top piece those things combined will give me the strength that the base doesn't drop off the top work surface
In fact, I'm just looking at this now, the way these drawers sit in here. I can theoretically screw into these plastic nubs from above and below without affecting the movement of the drawer. These have all got to be uh, sprayed, so I am going to stick some of my favourite uh, terrain guys on, uh, spend an hour or two watching them whilst I patiently sand all of these drawers whilst I leave this to dry. Okay, so these uh, uh, the cradle that the trays fit in that PP5. So apparently that's polypropylene, which is a hard plastic, and apparently this glue, uh, Bostic hard plastics clear glue, will bond to both this and the MDF with a strong bond, which is good to know. I'm guessing it's going to work very similar to impact glue because it says it's an instant bond. digging through my bits box and I found these which I get off my uh, rolls of paper for my big printer so I've chopped that down in half because I need a run of these and I'll just take you over to the, the actual build now so as you can see what I mean now what I'm thinking is is I can run an LED strip along here so I'm going to take these these cut pieces and run a length of these uh, in front of here like this. Okay, I am pretty happy. Uh, the LED strip is in. This piece will be actually up on the top, so it's going to come through a hole here. You won't see all this. This is just for light out, out the, the sort of the, the grills that I'll fit here at the front. Oh, you'll see that the trays are in now as well. These have been these have been sprayed. I was a bit e a bit uh, eager. <laughs> um, been uh, black under sprayed now we've got lots of you can see there we've got lots of detailing going on on the sides still got to uh, get the front sections that fit in these two recesses here 
because those will be storage tubes like this one. That's the paint's still a little wet, so I can't tug that out yet. Let's get all the LED action going on. Looking good. Okay, and then my next job is to make it look metal. Okay, so I've took the top off this. Uh, I'll clean this out once uh, once I've got rid of everything I don't need to clean. Um, but now I've got that done, I can sort of show you how I've done this. Um, it takes a little bit of effort to get your your blade there through that through that tin to start off with. But once you have, then it you can start to cut around with relative ease. I mean, you've got to watch this end, obviously. It is a little sharp. And don't try to force it too much because, you know, you could easily twist this tin, especially as the as the rigidity of it starts to collapse from removing the ends. That tin could easily twist and this blade slice into your fingers. So I guess this bit isn't really for the faint-hearted, but I would rather do this, so I am recycling, than just ordering sheet metal off Amazon. There we go, that's it. Yeah, okay. So, I now need to cut that down its length. I could probably do this with a pair of scissors. In fact. There we go. And I don't need to worry about these edges once they're in situ. So yeah, here we go. Here's my brayer, just an artist roller. Should be able to start getting that reasonably flat. Yeah, and I think once that's glued down, I think So yeah, the, the tin got very, very hot from uh, the glue, obviously, the hot melt glue. Uh, so I used the brayer again to, uh, to just roll that in. That's been covered with the green felt. So um, yeah, I think that's going to look fine once, uh, once that's on there as well. Turns out, uh, hot melt glue doesn't like the leather cloth um, that I've put on here. So I'm going to use that instead, see how that works out. So. Since we've got the clearance, just give that a firm press down. So it's going to need a few hours to dry that is. Uh, I think it takes about four hours for this to cure if I, if I recall. 
So yeah, this is pretty cool. So there'll be there's four jars here, and these will go onto here, and you can obviously turn that around for whichever to get to whichever one you want. So there it is guys, it was uh, quite the task to do in the very short space of time but uh, it came together pretty damn well. I think it's um, you know very very functional, uh, Mary has loved it which is good, I'm super pleased about that. Um, I'm probably going to make another one for me because you know hey maybe not necessarily steampunk certainly something that's a bit wacky looking um but mine will be for you know painting miniatures um because my minis spend their painting time in precarious positions which is never good for miniatures um yeah so uh if i was going to do that what would you add to it i mean let me know down there in the comments uh <laughs> so yeah i thoroughly enjoyed doing it something a bit different uh it was pretty intense you should definitely have a go at doing it. It's pretty simple to put together. Didn't really cost a lot of money. Um, and uh, and uh, is worthwhile, I think. Um, so anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I really want to give a big shout out to everybody who subscribes. Everybody who comments. I always answer the every comment and... Um, and I, of course, want to say a big thank you to my patrons and those people who pay for my online courses or go over to my website and buy prints because it's all that that really, really gives me the stability to be able to carry on bringing these videos uh, to you. So thank you so much to all of you, everybody and every one of you. I love you all and I will see you very, very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.